Previously on the Adventure Zone. If his lab touches the ground, whole planet crystal. We're sending you in to detain and extract Lucas for his abuse of confidential information. Standard protocol applies. These suits allow you to cancel out a particular school of magic. Any transmutation magic that tries to affect you or any of the belongings you brought are going to be impervious. The shards, they were all targeting Merle when they flew Man. in your direction. Oh, that's just ridiculous, right? These these gemstones, <laughs> they done hate Merle. The, the whole airlock tunnel is just a sheet of ice. Uh, you see Killian and you see Carrie uh, just just murking some robots in there. They're really better than we are at this stuff. Super better at it. So uh, let's check it, out the fizzy lifting room. Things in this chamber are just floating, just floating in space. Do you see three shapes start to move upward toward the three of you very slowly? Oh, they're just tardigrades. Well, they sh- they're just they're just little guys. It's they're, pretty they're big. Like micro- Some water you- bears have been known to eat entire live organisms like rotifers and other tardigrades. Mm-hmm. Or elves, or elves, human, and dwarves. Hey, gang. I've got to keep my voice down because I just put the spooky kids to bed. Anyway, enjoy the episode. It's the Adventure Zone. So you're in the, the zero gravity trash room. Um, and, Fried angry uh, manatees. Yes, and these uh, these guys have uh, just shot out their probisci at the three of you. And uh, unfortunately, Merle and Taka, you missed your saving throws, and you have been grabbed by these probiscuses. Um, Taco or Magnus, you you push off of a a box or something and manage to get out of the way of it. Um, it's let's, real cool. Let's roll initiative real quick. Oh, not great. That's a six. Also six. Also six. Fuck me. Six sixty six. We're going to die. Yeah, but I rolled twice. Remember? Oh, thank God. Nineteen. Nice. Damn. All right. I turn my special belt to tardigrade. Okay. Yeah, it has a setting for fire, ice, lightning, and microscopic water bears. So Mm -hmm. you're good. Uh, who's got the f- higher decks between Taco and Magnus? My decks is two, two modifier. 14. You're not in this, uh, fight yeah, you are. anymore. I'm, I'm saying he's like, can't even compete with my decks. Cause it's like, what is it? I mean, my dexterity is 18. My yeah, modifier is okay, four. Then. Is it really? Yeah. Shit. Yeah, Your dexterous is a motherfucker. My, I have really good acrobatics. I've just never used it for some reason. What the fuck? Yeah, I have a plus seven to acrobatics. You're a fucking flip wizard, and you haven't yeah. done anything with that. I cool, wait. Any, I'm a oh, shit. Wizard. Sweet flips. Yeah, that, well, that's that's what I was getting around to with this episode, but I didn't really get to unveil that part of my... It didn't happen. Good news, anyway. you're in anti-gravity now. And you're uh, an underachiever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, first in the order is Merle. Uh, you are, uh, you, you have been grabbed, so if you want to try and get out of this thing's slimy, slimy grasp... Uh, you're gonna have to make a strength check. It's starting to pull you towards it, though. It's retracting this proboscis. Uh, it's it's about ten feet away from you, and it's kind of like eating its own like tongue, pulling you backwards into Gross. it. Gross! Like, like okay, bubble tape. Yeah, I, and and I don't want you to feel like you're railroading me, but I'm gonna make a strength check. Okay, I, I don't think you know what railroading is. Eighteen plus two. That's twenty. Uh, I got a 13. Um, so you, you've you managed to uh, wriggle free of this thing's grasp. Um, you, you are still kind of slowly moving towards it um, just because of, uh, you know, inertia. But uh, you, you, are, you are no longer restrained by this thing. Is it moving? Are they moving towards us as well? Still? Uh, yeah, this, this one was also moving a little bit towards you. All right. I am going to cast Spirit Guardians. Okay. Um... Is this the Delarie spell? No, no, that's uh, that's different guardians. No, this is no, no. Wait a minute. 
<laughs> this is, no, I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing because I doubt you. I'm laughing because like clerics just have like 20 different guardians. You're basically a Pokemon master of angels. These are, okay, so these are a bunch of little spirits that flit around uh, in a sphere of like 15 feet. Okay, around me, and any creature uh, is uh, oh, for one thing, their speed is halved in the area, and when they enter the area for the first time, they have to make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the creature takes three d eight radiant damage. Whoa! Okay, and that's your turn, right? That's it. Okay. Uh, tardigrades are up next. Uh, Fuck. So the two that managed to, uh, Yoshi, Tung, uh, you, Merle, and you, Mag... Wait, who didn't get tongued? I did not. Taco's okay. the only one still tongued. Yeah, uh, the, 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 those two tardigrades are definitely gonna be in that field, just because they were sort of pulling you towards them. Um, so, so you four are kind of in the same area. So, uh, they're gonna roll a wisdom saving throw. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll roll with the one that tongued Taco. That's a 19 uh, plus 1, so 20. Uh, that, that beats it. And then the one that had you, Merle, hold a 4. That did not save it. So he okay. takes what? I rolled 3d8. <laughs> 2. 8. eight. eight. Nice. So 18. Uh, okay, yeah, you, uh, you, you burn him up real good. Your little guardians, are they actually, like, little, like, butterflies? Um, they're tiny Della Reese's. <laughs> they're, they're, like, <laughs> they're little tiny, no, who's the, Roma Downies. These are little tiny Roma Downies. Okay, a hundred little Roma Downies. Yeah. Speaking in a hundred unintelligible accents. All just pierce, pierce this thing all at once. And, uh, it looks really, really, really bad off. So they're all going to take turns now. Um, this thing, Merle, is now, uh, because of sort of the inertia, has carried it forward. It's pretty close to you, so it's just going to try and take a big bite out of you. Ha! Good luck. Uh, that is a 14 plus 6, 20, 20. So that's where I take my armor class. That's 18. So I guess that's a hit. Yeah, uh, that is 12 points of damage. Oh, that's um, not bad. You'll be fine. As this thing just kind of bites... Bites under your arm. Yeah, it didn't didn't get through your suit, um, but you. I guess you're taking crushing damage. Uh, and then and did you uh, say under my arm so that it bit my pit? Yeah, it bit your armpit because it's a fucking nasty, nasty That's boy. Nasty. Awful. Uh, Taco, the one that has you all tongued up, uh, is going to quickly retract its tongue, bringing you right into its mouth zone. And he's going to take a big bite of you too. Uh, gosh, that is. 21. It's going to hit your AC. Yep. For 15 points of damage. Okay. Uh, as right. this thing takes a big old bite out of you. All right. And then uh, Magnus, um, the one that missed its its tongue attack on you, looks kind of sad. Mm. Um, he's just going to uh, hawk a big black tar-like loogie in your direction. Um so make a uh, dexterity saving throw to get out of the way of his projectile black spit. Uh, 13 plus 2, 15. That's not going to do it. Damn it. Um, yeah. You are hit by this, uh, this poison spit. Two points of damage. <laughs> it actually heals me. Weird. It heals you. It was, it was healing poison. Um, no, that is, uh, that is 19 points of damage. What the fudge? As this uh, black goo sort that's, of sinks into your suit and that's gives up, you Griffin. bad feelings all over your skin, um, but uh, it also kind of recoils because of that spit and is now sort of floating backwards uh, into the 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 big pile of uh, debris that it climbed out of. Um, it's sort of floating backwards. There's some. Uh, there's a couple. Let me explain some of the things that are in this room. Um, that if you want, you can take advantage of. Um, like I said, a refrigerator, a large pane of glass, three broken cages, some microscopes, two fire extinguishers, a set of weights, a giant industrial fan blade, wooden crates, and a red barrel. Great. Uh, that's it for the tardigrades. Next up is fucking Flip Wizard McGee Taco. <laughs> 
Flip Wilson. Popular Flip Wizard. The devil made him do it! Okay, there's a hit Flip Wilson impression for everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> for everyone to enjoy. Something the whole family can enjoy. Flip Wilson. I do flip. I love it when you do your FM DJ oh. voice. Uh, coming up next, <laughs> more Flip Wilson impressions. Um, I am going to cast one of my famous, as they say, spells, if you're ready. This spell is called Phantasmal Killer. <laughs> it's the coolest spell I can you cast. Find. You cast spells like Purd Happily. Uh, <laughs> I am now going to cast a spell, spell has and the name, name of this. <laughs> um, okay, so I just want to educate real quick everybody about tardigrades, okay? They can survive a few minutes at, at 304 degrees Fahrenheit. They can survive 30 years at negative 20 degrees Celsius. They can survive a few minutes at negative 1,000 degrees Kelvin. They can just survive a few days at negative 328 degrees Fahrenheit. They can go without water for 10 years. <laughs> These are savage beasts, and I'm going to haunt them with the only thing that can stop them, their own fears. What is a tardigrade fear? I can't fathom it because it's <laughs> unkillable. How about a dentist? Because no, all those teeth. It is unfathomable what I'm about to conjure, but it is a phantasmal killer. I'm going to tap into its nightmares uh, and create an, uh, of the one that uh, fucking attacked me, Natch, and it, it will create a illusory manifestation of its deepest fears visible only to that creature. It must make a wisdom saving throw, which I, if tardigrades are wisdom rich, you can go fuck yourself. Okay. On a failed save, the target becomes frightened for the duration. At the start of each of the target's turns before the spell ends, uh, the target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or take 4d10 psychic damage. Fuck me! On a successful wow. save, the spell ends. So at the start of its next turn, it would take that damage? Uh, yes, correct. Okay. Uh, but I have to make a save right now to see if I can get away from it. Jesus. It's a critical failure. Great. He's super this scared. Thing, this thing makes a noise because, like you said, they're unkillable, just like emotionless monsters. Uh, this thing makes a noise that makes you think that the Satan that Satan's afraid of just appeared in front of it. And who is, uh, who is it he dreaming of? Why? Yeah, I think it's none other than Johan August Ephraim goes his <laughs> his discoverer. <laughs> This this one. thing is scream gurgling, and it's hor it's a horrible 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 sound, um, and it actually unlatches its tongue from you and kind of like pushes you away from it to try and like get away from from this this double Satan. Enjoy your taste of taco. Yeah, that's what I say too. Is it. that your new? Is that the new? Well, only phrase? for things that bite me in the dick. <laughs> is that what bit you? In right in the dick. Oh my god! I edited it out, but yeah, it bit him right in the dick. Ah. <sighs> Um, Magnus, you're up. How close are the fire extinguishers? Uh, one is right next to you. I grab it. Okay. And I'm going to use it Won't to pro shit. to propel me <laughs> at like Wally -E style at um I don't know. Let's say the one that just bit Merle's armpit. No, that one took some damage already. Um, at the one who's sad about not getting to bite me with my shield in front of me. So I'm basically okay. like cannonballing into it. Okay, yeah, you, I like the I like the Wally -E comparison best. Thank you. Um, yeah, so you, you're, you're going to launch yourself at this thing. Um, I'm gonna, I'll give you advantage on the attack because this is cool. Great. What, how, mm, what kind of attack do you think it would be? Um, it's up to you if you want to try yes. and like hit it with your axe as you go flying by it, or if you want to like try and just bash it with I your shield. I want to bash it with my shield in the face. Okay. Real good. Uh, I don't really know how attacking with the shield. Go ahead and make the. You're, you're definitely proficient okay. in shield, so. Um, that was not great. Okay, that one's better. So that's um, 15 plus 7, 22. Yeah, that's a hit. Um, <clears throat> and we'll say. Let me think. What's your axe do? Um, one handed is 1d8 plus 6. Why don't you just do 1d6 plus 6? We'll just take it one dice down. Great. That is 5 plus 6, 11. Okay. Uh, this thing takes 11 points of damage, and uh, you send it, like, flying backwards uh, uh, towards the big sort of thing of, of flotsam and jetsam that the uh, the other guy ran off ran off to. Um, uh, so, yeah, they're, they're all kind of towards the bottom of the bottom of the room now um that's it for well i get a second attack 
Come on. Oh, yeah. They, well, we've got you... a tiny room of downies. We've got phantasmal fears. I get to attack twice. Please don't take this away from me. <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> Do you have a? Do you have like a throwing weapon or a bow? I'm or something going like to that? let the fire extinguisher keep shooting towards them. Okay. Let go of it, and then I'm going to shoot the fire extinguisher with my bow and arrow, with my crossbow. Okay. That is 16 plus seven, 23 against okay, you, the fire extinguisher. You send the fire extinguisher flying at all of them, and you shoot it with your crossbow, and it does burst and send white white foam all over the three of them and the bottom of the room. Um, and that white foam uh, is going to blind them, but they're not going to take much damage from it because it's just a little fire extinguisher. Yeah, but now they got disadvantage. Well, they're blinded. I think that's a different thing. But I, that would probably give disadvantage, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yeah, sure. Merle, you are next in the order. Um, all three of them are actually pretty clustered up right now. Um, okay, so they're more than 15 feet away. Um, they're, they're like, they're about 15 feet, like below you. Um, but they're not, they're not in your, your sphere. No, they've moved my out. My zone of Roma's is not in your my zone. Roma zone. If not it helps down, zone. they have a single gonad located above the intestine. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only one that didn't go all crat brothers on these things? <laughs> <laughs> um, Travis, I have a, a question. They're like, they're like putties from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. You just hit them once and they're single yeah, hidden hit gonads. <laughs> Go they can live for a billion years at 300,000 degrees Fahrenheit, but one good nard shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a question. Is Magnus still poisoned? No, no. Okay. Largely because I don't know how to resolve that. Well, I was going to protect him from poison because I... But I, I won't waste a spell on it if that's... If that's oh, no, no, that case. doesn't sound like a thing you'd do. I was going to. <laughs> Okay, so they're all kind of clustered together, right? Yep. Tell me again what's floating around. Uh, once again, um, there's a refrigerator, a large pane of glass, three broken cages, some microscopes, uh, one fire extinguisher, a set of weights, a giant industrial fan blade, wooden crates, and a red barrel. Griffin, does the refrigerator still have its door on it? Yeah, sure. Okay, well, I chastise Lucas heavily. Never throw away refrigerators with the door on. Learn that from Punky Brewster. Okay, but we're not really afraid hey, of, like, Hey, Lucas! We're not really afraid of, like, babies playing hide-and-seek up here or whatever. Well, were you afraid of a crystal creature? Because that happens. I guess you're right. I guess, Boo. you know, you know what? Point for Magnus. Do I have an advantage now? <laughs> yeah, in, in future First. arguments with me, you have advantage. Okay, I have another question. Do these vagina dentrata things, do they actually have eyes? Um, they, they, yes, but they're all, they, they're covered in fire cream. What's inside of a fire extinguisher? Does fire anybody cream. actually know? Anti-fire. Whipped cream? Oh, gosh. <laughs> We've gone from Crap Brothers to Bill Nye the Science Guy. Well, no, I mean, it's, it, I mean, I feel like this is something a lot of people, I mean, it's a dry chemical carbon dioxide or water. I mean, it's one it of depends three. on if it's an A, B, or C. Okay, so when right. I said fire, when I said fire cream, it was pretty like, yeah, I, that's wait, so, wait, sort of like the colloquial yeah. term for it. Okay, the one that was I was all chewed up from from the Roma Zone. Yeah, I'm gonna take that crummy axe with all of the names. Okay, of, of what's his name? The ch the child axe. The child axe with all of the power. This is like a Stephen King novel, sure. you know, where a kid at the end does something. <laughs> I'm gonna throw that hand axe, and I'm gonna throw it right down the ugly, gaping, toothy maw of that. One that's all beat up from the Roma Zone. Okay. Um, cool. <laughs> Roma Zone. You probably have to roll something. Yeah. Hey, you're gonna... Trav, listen, do I get... Do I no, get no, 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 no. You know what? Turn? You're right. Go for it. No, that's a, that is going to be a ranged attack. Oh, though. God, Travis. God. I'm just going to be... It's a ranged attack. You know, you no, you weren't. Freebie? No, you weren't. It, it's just because Travis said so. Oh, great. <laughs> it's a... No, it's a six. Plus? Oh, yeah, plus 14. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, that's a six. Yeah, you throw the, the axe of children, the, the child's axe of wounding, um, but it, you don't throw it very hard. It's <laughs> it just very slowly. It takes like 10 minutes as it just kind of floats <laughs> towards this water bear, and it hits it, and just like, <laughs> bink. No, doesn't and, it go in his mouth? Yeah, it opens its mouth and it fucking eats it. 
Okay, it is a choking hazard then. It's fine. He digests it and shits it out, and this (laughs) shitty axe comes out and kills you. That's fine. Everybody else is allowed to think outside the box. No, you can think outside the bun all you want, Taco Bell. You just have to do the shit good. (laughs) He's Taco Bell. It still comes down to the rolls. Next in the order are these tardigrades. Um, I guess I'll roll a saving roll against fire cream. Uh, the one that's got chewed up by the Romazone is saved. Um, the one that, well, the middle one that attacked Taco did not. And the one that attacked Magnus did not. So those two are going to be blind. Um, they also, I'm going to need the middle one to roll a uh, wisdom saving throw. Oh, fuck, that's right. Because Spooky Johan is, is stalking his <laughs> dreams right now. Get real spooky ooky. Real spooky. Uh, 13? No. What? No. Okay. Hell no. Hell so no. he takes. Oh shit. Okay. Four D ten. Hold on one second, my lovely. Let me give you four D ten the damage. <laughs> we got three, ten, to five, six, sixteen, and twenty four. Okay. Yeah, that middle tardigrade uh, tries to wipe the fire cream off his eyes and fails to do that. And he looks really pitiful, and then his head just scanner style explodes. <laughs> so that's one down. Nice. Well, that's mine, fellas. Uh, so the other one that did save uh, Merle, uh, he's going to uh, push off the floor of this room away from the big ball of uh, of debris uh, and come at you. Uh, and as he flies at you, he's going to try and take a, another bite. Uh, that is a 19 versus AC. Now, to be fair, uh, he, uh, yes, when he yes, enters be, the zone, is yeah. his speed halved? Well, the it's rook? the first. It's the first time a creature. No, but anytime it's in the zone, their speed is halved. Yeah, I haven't really been tracking speed because we're in a weightless zero g like. But that's what I'm saying. So he would slow down enough. Okay. Yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. Fair play. Uh, he he's not going to be able to get close enough to take a bite out of you. Um. So instead, he's just going to try and Yoshi tongue you to try and bring you in range. Um, so make a dexterity saving throw, Merle. With disadvantage, because you don't have anything to get your body off. <laughs> so I roll it twice. Yep, take the worst result. 15. Uh, yeah, that does it. You get out of the way of this thing's tongue. Um, it actually licks back and uh, misses you with its tongue, and its tongue keeps going, and it actually sticks onto the, the big refrigerator. And you hear him go like, oh, oh, Not again! Oh. Uh, and the one that is blinded is going to, uh, try and spit acid at Taco, um, with disadvantage. Uh, that's a 17 plus 6, so 23, but disadvantage. Uh, 10 plus 6, 16? Where's AC? Taco? Uh, that will... Oh, let me grab my sheet real quick. I knew, I knew offhand that... Oh, yeah, no, I'm four. sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, I fucked up. This is okay. a dexterity, this is a dexterity saving throw. Not an attack, not a ranged attack. Okay. Um, but I'll give you advantage since he's blinded. So I need to make a dexterity saving throw? Yes! Okay. To try and get out of the way of this big black ball of spit. Uh, 13? That ain't gonna do it. Plus but your dex. He has disadvantage, though, right? Yeah, so you, I'm going to give you advantage, because I don't know how to do disadvantage if you're the one making the I got roll, you. except just to... And then we have 16. Uh, nope. That, neither well, of those but plus your dexterity. Are you doing that? Yeah, I added it. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, you are hit by this poison spit as well. Ugh. Uh, 14 points of damage for Taco. Okay. And that's it for the Tardigrades. Taco, you are up. I am going to cast... Are they still clumped, or what's the deal? How close are they? Uh, Not really, not anymore. One of them is... They're probably about 10 feet away from each other. Um, One of them has a tongue attached to a big refrigerator, uh, and the other one is sort of still back towards the big pile of debris. Okay, Um, and how close are they to me? Uh, They're both about... They're about 10 feet away from you, also. Then I am going to cast this as a... I'm going to cast third level Thunder Wave and hit both okay. of them. All right. 
So you have to make a constitution saving throw. For both, both of them. them. Okay. Uh, 12. We'll say that one was for the one back near the debris. That's okay. not going to do it. Nope. And then the one that... The Romazone... Wow, Jesus. Roll a seven. Certainly not. No. Okay. Uh, So now they are both going to take... A thousand points of damage. (laughs) 4d8 thunder damage. Fuck me. Wow. Man, it really makes my axe seem not so great. (sighs) This really isn't uh, Magnus's area to really shine. Seventeen. Seventeen points of damage. Okay, the one that was in the Roma zone, uh, you blast him backwards uh, with your wave of thunder wave. Doesn't there, isn't there a push effect too? Uh, yes, uh, ten feet away. Okay. Uh, yeah, the the Roma zone one uh, gets blasted backwards. He just collides with a wall, and you see uh, some some pink fluid come out of his snoot, um, and he it stops moving. Um, dead. He's dead. He died. Uh, the other one uh, that was back towards the pile looks pretty bad off. Um, Magnus and, yells, "Push him towards me!" Uh, well, no, you. I don't think you can choose which way to push him. I think you yeah, just push you him away. Uh, can you? Can no. you thunder no, wave? I think pull it would be, it's not it, telekinesis. It's yeah. trajectory away from me. Oh, yeah, anytime so, I've done push with Phantom Fist, I got to choose where they went. Sorry. Well, you're uh, more in control of Phantom Fist. That always more like an explosion. Yeah, oh, it's, I, it, yeah imagine yeah. like a Fusro Da. You can't be like Fusro Da. Fusro Dare over Dare. No, Fusro over Dare. Uh, also, all of the uh, debris in the back of the room uh, has also broken up, and now this room ha- kind of has like a snow globe thing going for it. We're just like there's just shit flying around all over the spot. Um, uh, yeah. So next in the order is Magnus. You got one one grade left. I got what? Oh, one, gotcha. There's tardigrade. Um, I'm going to. Is there anything I can push off towards it? Uh, yeah, you're pretty close to the giant industrial fan blade. Okay, I'm going to push off of that towards the tardigrade. Okay. And he, I'll just tell you what I want to do, and you tell me what I have to roll to do it. Okay. This is the tardigrade that. Oh no 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 the the tardigrade that just died was the one that was attached to the refrigerator. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want to grab it and throw it at Merle. Okay. Oh, <laughs> um, so I, I bounce off and I grab it. Okay, yeah, so he's pretty much right up against the wall. So you, you push yourself off the fan blade and get to the wall uh, right next to where he is. Uh, that would be a strength contest. Good news. Yeah, you're real good at that. Yeah, so that's 16 plus 7, 23. I got a 19, which would have been good against a mortal man. Yeah, except I work out every day. <laughs> yeah, you get those fucking sick gains for for throwing microscopic science creatures. Yeah, so I throw them at Merle. Okay, you you chuck them real good. You chuck them real, real good. Now, Merle, you got a fucking fastball special well, coming so your way. It's going to enter the Roma zone for the first time. Exactly. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that we don't even need to get to that turn. Uh, what does he do? Wisdom saving throw? He has to make a wisdom saving throw, yes. Uh, 21. Oh, snap. Sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, fucking smart tardigrade, huh? A smarter grade, if you will. He had a, wait, he had a stroke of, a he had a flash of genius. Does he not still have disadvantage? Uh, he does on attacks, not on Roma avoidance. <laughs> <laughs> not on, Man. not on angel dodging. Roma has a way of short circuiting all of our defenses. I get, I have, um, a special called Commander Strike. So for my second attack, I'm actually going to command Merle to attack, uh, make a weapon attack, and then I add my advantage, uh, my dice to his damage. Okay. Uh, yeah, this thing is going to be in melee range of Merle, definitely. So wait, I don't, what What the fuck? You're like pulling, you, you're controlling his mind? No, I'm basically saying like, attack that guy, and then okay. he's using my second attack to do it. Interesting. Yeah. That's neat. Okay. So yeah, Merle make great. a great. It's working Merle, out as well as the first part. I hope Merle make a melee attack against uh, this this water bear. If only you still had your romper room axe. I've got little choppy my real axe. Little you, choppy. I, I don't know how many times I have to tell you you don't have an axe. You got, you got that battle hammer. wrench. You got the battle wrench. You got your war hammer. I have an axe. I've had an axe from the beginning. No, I have an axe. That's my steez. 
Nah, I think that has an. Ounce. All right, I'll hit him. I'll hit him with my warhammer. Just, but we will discuss this in the off season. Okay. We'll talk you about had an axe. Zone you, had, zone. you had an axe, and we'll talk about how how just like Lucy Goosey you are with your belongings. Come here, Scuttle buddy. <laughs> Bye. Get on that train <laughs> to hell. See you later, axe. Oh, axe. I found you. I love you. Bye. I threw you in a monster's mouth, and, and I'm going to get shit. an apology on the next episode from you because that I seems right very unlikely. You that are wrong. Super apology. unlikely. All right, I'll hit him with my warhammer. Okay. Do I get to name that? Yeah, if you want. Smoosher. Okay. Pretty I good. feel like you've already busted that out. But. Okay. What did I just roll for? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hurting. 17 and none of my modifiers. That's what that plus three is. Okay. 17, then. Uh, yeah, that's a hit. Excellent. All right. My superior nice. dice, so whatever your damage is, plus four. Okay. Five plus four. Nine points of damage. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, you guys basically just did a like a quick little baseball game. You need to name it something, Trav. In this zero, yeah, you guys have just invented a new hot zero gravity water bear sport. Mm-hmm. Um, only that only works on smart ones. Yeah, uh, yeah, this is smart, the only way to, smart water bear. Uh, you, you, yeah, you, you club this thing with your bat, and you hear it grunt um, and cry sadly, and some pink pink juice comes out of it, and it hits the wall and is dead. We just Joey Votto'd that thing. Yeah, I'm not going to have a bunch of people tell me I missed another great Travis joke. So, Travis, smart water bear is a very funny joke. Yes, Thank it you. is. Thank you very much. That is good. Well, just because smart water is an extant product? Yeah. But smart water bear, and it was a smart water bear. This portion of Adventure Zone brought to you by smart water. So, smart water bear. And gummy bears. A smart also, also the natural, bear. the National Bear Council. Hey, guys, can we chill out a bit on bears? <laughs> hey, just be cool on bears for two seconds. If you see a bear, it's time to fucking go, man. <laughs> Get out of there. Yes, That's the bear's house. Unless the bear's in your house, then call somebody. Don't try to take care of it on your own. Let's not gloss over the fact that we just won a battle. Yeah, and yeah, like pretty, legit pretty won. Because that doesn't, that doesn't happen all the time. You know, normally, a much better equipped woman has to come in and save us. <laughs> It's simply um, the way we could do it. All three tardigrades burst open, and a million baby tardigrades, a swarm of now them. Now they are eggs, and it takes 14 days for the eggs to hatch. But, uh... <laughs> do your fucking research. <laughs> This is Griffin McElroy, your dungeon master, your best friend, your partner in crime. Let's do some crime together. Thanks for listening to episode 34 of The Adventure Zone. And I have lost track where we are in the Crystal Kingdom arc, but we're somewhere deep in it. I got a few Jumbotron messages to read to you before we get started. Well, no, we've already gotten started, but here's some Jumbotron messages. If you want to get one on the show, just go to MaximumFun.org slash Jumbotron. Here's the first one. It's from Evan Jones, who wants you to start your family adventures together at Together Tales. Ah, this is a really neat one. I was I was on this website, TogetherTales.com. I was researching it. It is... Well, I'll let them talk first through these words. I'm going to actually talk. But they said, this is a story about a Dungeon Master dad who decided story time could use a little more adventure and created Together Tales. Together Tales is a collection of interactive books that parents bring to life for kids age 7 to 12. Each adventure kit includes a book split into chapters along with treasure hunts, digital games, cute coincidences, and clues that put your child at the center of each story. I got a lot of people telling me that they listen to the Adventure Zone, and sometimes they let their kids listen to the Adventure Zone, and we are glad that that is happening although certainly we say some uh, objectionable stuff here on the program. Uh, this sounds like a really fun and cute way to do some adventures with your kids without having four adult men cursing at them all the time. Uh, it's really neat. They send you an adventure kit that comes with a personalized book. You can get your child's name uh, in, in the book, uh, and then you can customize like little activities that you have to do while reading different chapters of the book. Uh, go to TogetherTales.com. They can explain it a lot better, but uh, it looks really, really neat. Next up, I've got a message here for Kathleena Cruck Esquire, and it's from Mario, who says, Thanks for being an amazing friend and DM. I wish I could keep you in Chicago, but wherever you go this year, I know you'll be a zealous advocate for those in need and have fun doing it. Thanks for making me listen to The Adventure Zone and Mabim Bam. Happy birthday. McElroy's, would Magic Brian and or Geralt please wish her a happy birthday? Well, Justin does Geralt, but 
It's me, Magic Brian, back from the grave. I think this is what I sounded like. I forget. It's been like two years. Happy birthday. I'm pretty sure that's just my emo Phillips impression. And one last message here. This one's for Fergus, and it's from Glenn, who says, Happy Eternal Candle Nights, baby brother. You've already got the D&D source book, so the next best gift is well wishes from Griffin on one of our favorite McElroy podcasts, plus the chance of your name possibly being used in-game. Our shared brotherly nerdiness brings me joy and is now stitched into the fabric of podcast history. Geralt lives! Um, he does? I mean, he's a ghost. He's a spectral equine being um so if you can consider that being life uh then then yeah absolutely girl is alive somewhere in the ether sphere but happy eternal candlelights fergus i think that means i'm wishing you a, a like a belated happy holidays uh and if that's the case i like that spirit Christmas in February. I want to thank everybody who has been tweeting about the show using the the ZoneCast hashtag. If you use that hashtag, you might end up as a character on this show. Um, I don't think there's any new characters in this episode, um, but in my defense, there were like nine new characters in the last episode. Uh, but yeah, if you want to end up uh, as a character like a, like a Jamie Green or like a John Cook or like a Chloe Noel, uh, then tweet about the show using the, the ZoneCast hashtag. Uh, we also appreciate you, you know, spreading the word because we don't advertise this podcast in any conceivable way. Uh, and, and so you telling people about the show who you think might be into D&D or who people who you know are into D&D or who people you think hate D&D, uh, we really appreciate it any of those three ways. Uh, and thank you very much. We have the Max Fun Drive coming up very soon uh, here in just a few weeks. We've got a lot of really fun uh, plans in store for the Max Fun Drive, uh, including a bonus episode for donors. Uh, the bonus episode involves a uh, like a one shot story that Travis actually DM'd with whole new characters, a whole new setting. Um, we recorded it uh, last weekend, and it was extremely super fun, and we're already trying to figure out a way to do more of that. So we will let you know more details when Max Fun Drive is coming up. It's going to run from March 14th to the 25th. We have a lot of really fun stuff planned for it. Um, and last last year, everybody was so super supportive of the show during the Max Fun Drive. We are a donor-supported network at Maximum Fun, um, a- along with the few ads that we do. We really rely on your donations to be able to put more time and energy into this thing, and you guys were all so super, super great to us last year. So uh, again, coming up March 14th to the 25th, lots of fun, the Adventure Zone stuff going to happen during the drive. Hey, speaking of Maximum Fun, why don't you go to the other shows on MaximumFun.org and just start clicking and listening to them. We got shows like Bullseye. We got shows like Getting Curious is a fairly new one. We got shows like Lady to Lady. We got shows like Ono, oh Ross, and Carrie. There's a ton of shows on the network. Uh, Justin and Travis and Dad and, well, not Dad. This is the only show Dad does. But tra- Justin and Travis and I have other shows too. We got shows both on and off the network. Uh, I have one that I do with my wife, Rachel, called Rose Buddies, where we talk about The Bachelor. I've got a new video game podcast called Cool Games, Inc. that I do for Polygon, uh, in which me and Nick Robinson uh, come up with pitches for video games. Travis has a brand new show called Interrobang that he does with his friend Tybee Dyskin, where they get angry about stuff and uh justin and sydney do sawbones which is a medical history show sydney also just launched a new podcast called still buffering with her little sister riley where they talk about hashtag teen life got our fingers in like 16 pies at this point you can find all those at mcelroyshows.com i have talked for ages we're gonna get back to the episode now uh the next episode will be up on march 10th God, that seems like forever away. I mean, it's not. It's just two weeks, but still. Anyway, we'll see you then. And then a week after that, it's Max Fun Drive time. So start getting psyched out of your mind. You, uh, you've exited the zero gravity room and made it through the airlock into what looks to be the main lobby of the lab, um, which isn't crystallized. It is still in its normal labby form. Um, And uh, there's a bunch of different airlocks leading to a bunch of different chambers from this like central hub. You can see an airlock leading to the main entrance of the lab. (laughs) What's wrong? I'm just thinking this is like our bottle episode where we just reuse the, the airlock set over and over again yeah. with just a little like hang a different sign on it. Uh, yeah, this is this is basically like old school Doctor Who. Like <laughs> I've only got the one airlock. Uh, uh, one of them is, is labeled to uh, to head to the main entrance um, and that airlock is actually shut down. Uh, it's, it's powered down. Um, there's another airlock on the opposite end of the room that you can't really make out. Um, that's also powered down. Um, there is the airlock you just came from, 
There are three airlocks leading to the med bay, one leading to one labeled to uh, go to the main elevator, and one heading to a room called Cosmoscope. And then uh, uh, right next to you, right next to the door that you just exited from, is the airlock leading into the thermal regulation chamber, um, which also has a layer of ice around it. Uh, but as you enter into the room, you hear coming from that door, you hear some banging and shouting and chopping coming from that iced over door. I start and chopping he- too. Okay. Yeah, you get your axe out and start chopping on the other end of it. You you guys hear Killian and Carrie going, uh, uh, Merle, Taco, Magnus, is that you guys? Is that you guys? Yeah, it's it, it's Killian and Carrie. Oh, I was it, thinking of different guys. No, no, no. We're, we're, can you help us get out of here? We've been chopping at this ice wall for forever. I'm chopping too. Okay, let's let's just hurry. We're running out of time. Whacking and whacking and slashing. I get my axe ready so I can help him. <laughs> you don't have an axe. What? Um, <laughs> talk. Uh, you hear a talk, talk. Do you have any like fire stuff you can do? Or like, oh sure. Really what good is an axe when there's magic around? Yeah, everybody step back. <laughs> I got fire. I got fire. You want well, me to use my I know, fire? You guys so have, have fun. To... Yeah, go for it. My firearm is a little. Well, so you don't, you know, burn a spell. Sure. And since I don't use mine right. Okay, I cast Sacred Flame on it. Okay. Uh, Sacred Flame is sort of fire of a divine origin. I'm a divine guy. I know this. I I know this very much about it. Would radiant damage not help? Uh, No, but you did teach the ice like a a quick parable about (laughs) Pan and his his divine divine guidance. Okay, uh, fine. I'll use Fireball. Fuck. Okay. Uh, Yeah, you you, you blast the the door with Fireball and Magnus. You're chopping away with your axe. Um... Merle, you hear a voice in your head. You hear a you hear a whisper come from behind you. Kill again. <laughs> no, it's uh it's uh the the voice sounds like Merle Merle behind you, Merle. Merle damn it. Merle, look behind you. Mm-mm. Yep. Merle, it's Pan. Look behind you. you all fool. right, all right. I turn around and look behind me. Um you look behind you while everybody's busy get, getting into this door, um, uh, heeding this voice that apparently only you can hear. And you see a small rift open in space. And you see the, the crystal with the white fire starting to come through it. Um, and that, that voice says, uh, Merle, listen, you have to trust me. It's me, Pan. You have to grab the crystal. Grab it with your hands before it touches the ground. You can stop this room from getting crystallized. You can save your friends. Grab the crystal. Hmm. And the uh, thing is starting to pop out of this rift womb uh, and make its way out. Well, that certainly is a conundrum. All right. I grab it. (gasps) Okay. Yeah, you catch the crystal before it drops to the ground. Yeah, you, you, the, the rift closes up and uh, nothing, nothing gets crystallized as you, as you grab this white, fiery crystal. Um, and uh, as soon as you grab it, you hear that voice again, and it goes, uh, Oh, well, this is going to be a lot easier than I thought. And you hear a sound like a light bulb shattering. As the as the crystal in your hand just kind of uh, kind of shatters and fractures into splinters, and you feel a sharp pain in your hand, and that sharp pain uh, is kind of replaced by this strange numbness. Um, and as you open up your hand, you realize that you have a few little needles of this crystal sticking out of your hand. Okay. And, Chopping uh, away at the door, <laughs> and your hand is uh, your hand is starting to get starting to change. Your hand is actually starting to turn turn uh, uh, the the suit, I should say, around your hand and your arm. You can feel it like it hurts a, a whole bunch. I can't even describe how bad it feels. Um, but yeah, your your hand is starting to turn into to pink pink. Tormel. I turn around and chop it off. Bear wait. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's it's grown up to his forearm. Are, are, how do you? I guess I, my question is, how would you know? Well, he's probably screaming by this point. Unless he's no. just so super cash about the whole arm turning into crystal thing. Huh, right, that's weird. What's, ter- what's turning into crystal? The suit 
Or my arm. All of it. The whole kit and caboodle. It's growing up. It's up your wrist now. It's about halfway up your forearm. Would it help if I took the suit off? Uh, it's like already in your body, it seems like. Okay. It's it's going up you. It's, okay. about to, it's about to your elbow now. I turn and say with a calm <laughs> but manly voice, um, Noel, check this shit out. Oh, my God. Guys, he's crystallizing. I turn around and chop Guys. it off. I chop it off. Quit chopping me I'm going to chop it off. No. Oh, Let me chop it off. Like a, that, Travis, that seems like a very personal character choice that you're making for dad right now. I don't think you should decide whether or not he wanders this earth as a one-armed dwarf. No, I'm, but I want you to know that Magnus in character is screaming, let me chop it off. That's yeah, it's a, fine, but you can't say you chop it off. I'm t- I'm saying that in character, I have a history of arm removal. <laughs> it's, I will give Travis advantage on this role. He is an arm removal specialist. <laughs> <laughs> wow, uh, that's a really good point. Cl- Merle, do you want me to freeze it? Maybe I should freeze it? I don't know if freezing it would do any good. I mean, it's better than chopping it off. No. Wait, is that all Noel did? You bitch at us for not using her, and then I try to use her, and she just goes, "Oh, poopy." Well, That's I it. can't. I can't. Like, I can't anti crystal. You, somebody, do something. Chop the damn thing off. Chop it off. Just chop yeah, it off. I don't care. I roll. Chop it off. Hey, wait. No, I got no, to chop my head off. I roll. Then 15. I won't suffer. <laughs> <laughs> here, chop off my, here, right here, chop it off here. I rolled Leave a 15 plus 7, it's a 22. Okay. <laughs> You're chopping off my damn arm, seriously. Uh, Noel floats over to you, Merle, and opens up your helmet and puts a little wooden spoon in your mouth. Bite, bite down on this, you're not going to like this next part. <laughs> Why did Pan lie to me? Uh, oh, it wasn't Pan, was it? Uh, oh, that, shit. And that is your last thought as a two-armed man. As Magnus brings rail, Mag- Magnus brings Merle Splitter down, just above the elbow, and you hear a grizzly, Chris, Chris Nump. Wait, at least, wait, wait, wait! At least below the elbow. Come on. Uh, he Not gets, above. he gets, he actually very artfully carves it just about where the crystal was. Um, I'm really and, good at this. Yeah, and uh, go ahead and roll damage, Magnus. Okay. Let's see. Uh, it's two-handed. That is seven plus six, so thirteen. I okay, feel 13. like damage should be reduced though, because it's it's he's not aiming to cause damage. To I don't mar- want him to half cut off my arm. I guess, but like, okay, well, I guess that's true. Yeah, all right. Yeah, matter of fact, when he brings the axe down, I'm throwing the arm up in its direction. I'm leaning into the chop. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Clang 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 clang. Uh, your, your your arm falls to the ground, and Merle, uh, make a Constitution saving throw just to see if you can like stay conscious during all of this, because this no, is like I don't this want is, to be conscious. This I don't is want fucking. To, be able to see my arm. Okay. No, I'll do it. Constitution. This will be a sick roll. You watch this, Nat, Natty Twenty. I can smell it. No, look at it, Juice. Look. What that's, is it? That's a critical miss. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's Merle. A one. He Merle, you're the down. Fuck out. Good yeah. Night. You, you're down for the count. Uh, Merle is unconscious now. Uh, uh, he he just falls backwards, sees sees what's just happened, and faints. And Killian and Carrie have just like gotten through the ice and look over, and it's like, oh, I'm so glad that you got. What the fuck? Step two, somebody heal him. I, I don't I don't have any my I have my med my med spray ah, ready shit. yet. Ah shit! Shit! You hear uh you hear uh, uh Lucas say, oh, "Oh, what just happened? Get it! You're close to the med bay. Bring him in. Did you just cut his fucking arm off?" Yes. Oh. Okay, I pick him up and I run in the med bay. Oh. You pick you you pick him up rescue nine one one style and and run him over to the med bay. Um, maybe singing a sweet lullaby to him because he's, he's oh shit, sweet. Wait a minute, who's carrying me? The guy that just chopped my arm off. You or the guy ask. that just let it happen. You basically just begged begged him to. It happened really fast. <laughs> <laughs> in in fiction, it happened really fast. I I don't know how. Uh, I will as we're running. Um, I mentioned that to uh, I mentioned to Merle that if we need a new arm, the good news is he's got lots. Yeah. So if we could figure out a way to make that work. That would be rad. Yeah, I'm unconscious. Thanks. No, I'm not. Okay, that's not what unconscious people say, but let's keep moving. (laughs) (laughs) 
Hey, um, hey, if you're working from input for me, you're not getting it because I'm out of I'm it. totally I'm, unconscious over here. I'm Nothing unconscious to add. as hell. Your whole party, the three of you, Merle, you're unconscious with Noel and Carrie and Killian, uh, rush in through the airlock towards the med bay as just chunks of this room uh, that has become crystallized start to break up and start to uh, what it, it looks like this thing is self forming again, but you don't really stick around long enough to watch it. Uh, put itself together into some sort of grisly monster. Um, With Merle's and, uh, arm floating in the middle. Yeah, Merle's arm is actually part of the mix. Uh, you, you, see this, you see this thing using Merle's arm as part of its form, but you don't really see how it ends up in the production. Um, and uh, yeah, you, you huff it through the med bay. As you go through the airlock, um, before you actually get into the med bay, you uh, reach a sign that says decontamination chamber. Um, and, uh, as you, as you open it up, it's actually a pretty small chamber, um, that, uh, has, has some medical equipment in it and what looks like, like an observation bay, but this whole room has also been completely crystallized. Oh, bummer. Um, and as you pass through that and, and through another airlock, you do actually make it into the med bay and there you see Lucas for the first time since you met him in the void fishes chamber. Lucas, fix my friend. I don't know what happened. Uh, uh, Lucas, <laughs> uh, Lucas has a big bandage on his head. He has a big, like, bloody bandage on his head. Um, but he says, like, what did you do to that dwarf? Well, well you said you needed us to give you a hand. Uh, 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 seriously, what did you get? Before you can finish that sentence, Killian actually grabs him and picks him up and is like, this has been the worst, shittiest day ever. We are two people down. Your lab sucks. Fix my friend. He says, y- y- you better put me down if you want me to help him. Killian. And Carrie's like, K- Carrie's like, yeah, guys, let's, can we take this thing? Just bring it down just a little bit. Let's, let's figure out how to help Merle out right now. Meanwhile, bleed, 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 bleed. Lucas, Lucas grabs you. He's like, help me, help him, help me put him up on this table. Magnus, use your big, strong, your big, strong arm removing arms. I do it. Yep. How ironic that your big, strong arms are only good at one thing, and that's removing other people's arms. Yeah. It's very ironic. I put him on the table. Okay. Uh, yeah, he starts to uh, wrestle around in a in a, a drawer <laughs> full of uh, spare dwarf arms. <laughs> full of spare dwarf arms, and he just like sticks one on, and you're just fine. Um, uh, no, he actually pulls out a syringe and jams it into Merle's arm, um, and uh, you uh, it regrows. No, it's uh, the, the the bleeding starts to slow a little bit. Merle, you actually wake up a little bit. You gain a little bit of consciousness as you feel this needle go into you. <laughs> The, I can't tell if that was real or not. He's a very good actor. That's because yeah, I'm an actor. That was, that was really terrific. Um, uh, but actually, this this thing is actually uh, numbing your your grisly wound pretty significantly. Um, it's 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 bringing you some pain relief. Not so much ah. H, not so much HP relief, but you, you're not in a horrific amount of pain anymore. Um, and uh, Killian's in the corner. She's using. Uh, she she is uh, speaking to the director through a stone and just like checking in, uh, letting letting them letting the the home base know the situation. And Lucas asks, like, what has been going on out there? What are you guys doing? What happened to Merle? Well, he, I crystal- got disarmed. Uh, pretty good. Um, he started to crystallize. We were chopping on a door and and magicking a door. Then we heard Noel scream, and we turn around. His hand was turning to crystal, and then his arm was turning to crystal, and I heroically, valiantly chopped his arm off against my my wishes. He begged me, and I cut his arm off so that he wouldn't all crystal. And hey, l- listen, let me stop you right there. This Lucas isn't your dad. <laughs> you chopped your dad's arm off. You don't owe Lucas any explanation. Get us the fuck out of you here, dirty prick! I can't believe you did this to me. And now he's drunk. I can't. Oh, we can't get out of here. We're, we can't get out of here until we manage to 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 stop the base from from sinking into the sea and crystallizing the whole world. You forget why we're here in the first place. Oh, yeah. It's because I well, it's I, been like well, four episodes, my dude. <laughs> it's because I fucked up an experiment pretty bad. But we we're that's not this. The arm thing's not on me. I don't think. Well, it was I crystal. I'm on everybody. Merle, can you hear me? <laughs> Yeah. Why, why was your arm turning to crystal? What happened? Uh, God lied. God, to me. God <laughs> lied to you? God lied to me. 
What? You have the prettiest eyes. Okay, yes, I do, but focus up. What do you mean God lied to you? Oh, do you I'll say it a different way. Yes. God lied to me. I turned to Lucas. Well, there you have it. Okay, I guess God lied to him. I, that's what I'm picking up for the situation. And then some British guy stuck a, 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 threw a crystal at me, and I, I grabbed it. And it hurt. Some British guy. No, I heard all of that. Um, okay, I, I, it's that... It's that being. It's that being that's been attacking my lab. I don't know what the fuck that thing is. But I'm so sorry that you guys had to get mixed up in this. I didn't want any of this. You have to believe me. I think it was that guy that was married to Katy Perry. It Russell sounded Brand? Like that. Russell Brand. It sounded like Russell Brand took my hand. <laughs> Lucas, is Russell Brand here? No, he's not. Hold on. He r- rustles out and gets another syringe out and gives Merle another shot. Uh uh, this, in this my butt. This give it to a, me in my butt. Uh, as you shout, give it to me in my butt, you feel sed- you feel much more sedated. There's a lot of shit going on, Lucas, that I feel like you're not being honest about. Like you're this right. I, compact. Yes. Oh, God, you went in my room? I did. It was a fucking mess. And it looked like somebody stole all your gems before Please we got shit, there. Dirty boy. Bleed, Wait, bleed, what? bleed, bleed, bleed. <laughs> All my gyms are gone? Well, that's what it looks like. Listen, let's, priorities. I'll explain the compact. I'll explain what you saw in there. I'll explain everything. We got to get this guy taken care fine. of He'll be fine. Tell me about the compact. <laughs> bleed, 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 bleed. He, uh, bleed. he gets out a, a, a notepad, uh, writes I something bleed down. bleed all over it. And hands the note to to uh, Carrie. It says, uh, Carrie, I need you to get over to the bugbears and tell tell Jamie Green to, to, to bring me these supplies right now, or, or you can bring them back. Tell, tell her to give you these supplies and get back to me as quick as you can. And she says, uh, oh, you got it. And she grabs the note and just, like, darts out of the room with blind Wait, speed. Carrie. She's gone. Oh. And uh, he's, he's doing some work. Uh, the, the bleeding has stopped. He's wrapped a big bandage around it, Merle. Uh, so you, it doesn't seem like Merle's going to die. Um, and he goes over to a desk in his corner, and he starts tinkering with some stuff. So he, he takes off his belt. Uh, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Has, no, don't worry about it. I've got a plan, and he's 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 working with it. He's uh he's got this petri dish that he's like mixing some sort of fluid in, um, and he's like, as as much as I want to, we we can't leave. We can't get him out of here until we stop this thing from spreading. I I I was down in, in the lower chambers of my lab late one and, night. One night and monster boy. <laughs> How does it anyway? Um, I was attacked by one of my robots, and I came up here to the med bay to to you know treat my wound. And when I tried to leave, the I found that that crystal monster or or whatever it is. It's not the monster itself isn't crystal. It's what's inhabiting the crystals. It it attacked me in the decontamination chamber, and so I. I made my way back here into the med bay, and I, I flooded the room with anti-conjuration in- energy because obviously he's traveling between planes to 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 move from from spot obviously. to spot. So I blocked it. Obviously, come on, that's like one hundred and one. You guys figured that out by now, right? Yep. I, guys, I'm just so sorry. I promise, I'll I'll get him patched up. I have an idea um, for for how to patch him up, and and we're gonna be able to. We're, you'll, you'll see, we'll get out of this, and we'll get down to my lower levels, and I'll stop the crystal from spreading, and mission accomplished. Great. Good work, and you guys will say good work, Lucas. Thanks for the good teamwork. Sounds uh, like us. I, I, yeah, it sounds like something we do. Shut up. Yeah. Let me say one more thing. Okay. Hello, beloved fans of Adventure Zone. It's me, Clint McElroy. Please write and drastically protest the treatment of your favorite dwarf <laughs> cleric in this episode. Thank you. <laughs> Um, no, I think, I think, uh, listen, we've had a lot of fun here. Today. Listen, we've had a lot but of fun. But I really want to just drive home the point take the doors off your refrigerators before you throw them away. Because <laughs> somebody could get their arm chopped. Somebody That's what it always off. leads to. I'm if, always. Hey, everybody, this is Lucas, a fictional character. I do want to step outside of Kayfabe for a second and tell you, for real though, the thing about the refrigerators, that one was on me. And if I had taken it off, I'm pretty sure Merle would still have the both of the arms. I don't. I'm not sure how it's connected, but hey, sliding doors. Have you seen that movie? Anyway, later. This is me, Lucas, on the Fading sliding doors. Into the ether. The sliding doors council. Hi, this is Justin McElroy. I'm an actor who plays the role of J- Taco on the Adventure Zone. I just want to say, I don't feel like I really did anything that funny this time around. But hey, <laughs> you get them next time, I guess. <laughs>
MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. You guys, I'm so excited to introduce to you my new baby, Getting Curious with Jonathan Van Ness. This is going to be a really fun look at things that I find curious, whether it's a menstrual cup, it might be the Romanoff family, it might be fracking, it could be Carly Fiorina. I don't even know. Who knows? It's going to be whatever I think is interesting. I can't wait to bring it to you guys. We're going to be bringing in content experts. I'm going to be learning the things. It's only going to take about 30 minutes for you to expand your baby brains with me and have a super fun time. So I can't wait to see you on our first episode of Getting Curious.